And now it's time for a couple of things that are on my mind, and this is week 65 of me doing this as a full-time occupation. And uh, we hit a milestone this week. 180,000 subscribers have now signed up here on the channel. So I wanna thank everybody for uh, clicking that subscription button and leaving it on. It's been a great period of growth, slow and steady, which is how I like it. And uh, 200,000 is just around the corner. So I want to thank you all for your continued support. And speaking of support and YouTubers and subscribers, uh, there's been a lot of press lately about YouTube's top creators burning out and breaking down en masse, and they're all complaining about how hard it is to do this job. And I think really any small business is this hard. You really do have to put in the time and uh, it's going to wear on you because that is what being a business owner is all about. I do think though there are some things YouTube could be doing better maybe to communicate with us about exactly uh, what we should expect and how to direct our content because there are people who work very, very hard, get themselves up to a point where they've got very steady viewership and then an algorithm change or some policy change completely destroys their business model and of course that isn't good either. But um, I think for the most part, if you are going to be doing this as a job and want to do it as a job, it requires a lot of work and you have to be prepared for that. Part of it though also is thinking about the kind of content that you're doing. So as you all know, I do uh, mostly on-demand videos. I make a video, I upload it, and you watch it whenever you want. I don't do a lot of live streaming. I could if I wanted to, but it doesn't bring in the kind of viewership over the long tail that the videos that I make do. And I really thought a lot about that when I was uh, building up the channel. What kinds of content do I want to produce? Uh, I would love to do more live streams and show you some of my old retro video games that I uh, like to play over the years, and that might get some viewership at that point in time, but it doesn't have a uh, evergreen kind of long tail to it, uh, whereas the product reviews that I do many times don't start out doing very well, but do exceptionally well over the long term because the videos have a lot of life to them. Uh, so I really look for, when I produce content, is stuff that's going to live a while uh, so I don't have to burn myself out continually making content uh, and ending up like some of these other folks have. So I wanna leave you with two thoughts and tips to think about if you are planning to do this as a career at some point. Uh, the first is that you need sustainability, not just economic sustainability for your business, but also sustainability for your own sanity. That if you have developed a business model that requires you to be on camera all day long, seven days a week, and if you stop earning revenue the minute you're off camera, that is not sustainable. Uh, so you really should think about maybe altering your content plan to do some more commoditized content. And what that means is basically doing stuff that is discoverable via search. And about 80% still of the traffic that I get on this channel comes from people who have never seen me before and may not watch me ever again. They came in for a specific product review, got what they needed and left. And again, that is a bulk of the traffic that I get here on the channel. And what that means is that videos that I did three or four years ago are still being watched relatively frequently, especially for products that have been out in the marketplace for a while. And believe it or not, printers uh, top the list of that sustainable evergreen content, which is why I look at them every once in a while. And you might be wondering, why is he spending so much time on a printer? There's real value for that kind of content out there. But at the end of the day, I have to make everything I sell, essentially. I'm the face of this channel. People expect that, and uh, that immediately limits what I can do is insofar as reviewing things, which is why I kind of narrow the focus down to you know, affordable computers and other things that uh, interest me in the course of the week. I can't just do everything that's out there, which is frustrating at times, but I'm trying to figure out some ways to uh, address that scalability issue, and hopefully I'll figure that out in the next year or two. But just keep that in mind when you get into this, that if you are seeing your channel reliant upon just a constant flow of content like 24-7, that is just not going to be sustainable in the long run. And you might want to pepper in some other stuff that uh, might have longer life to it. How-to videos in particular are really good ways to introduce some of that uh, evergreen content because people are always looking for tips and suggestions about how to do stuff and that can help you uh, supplement your time so that you don't have to really feel like you're chained to your desk all day long. And another thing to think about if you're seeing a bulk of your traffic come from your subscribers is that at some point people do get tired of the same voice all the time and they go and look for new content. In fact, YouTube's algorithm itself as we discussed last week is doing this 
all the time, trying to get people to see new and different things. And one of the uh, topics that came up in this article on Polygon was the fact that there is an ever-increasing wave of competition because YouTube's algorithm uh, is trying to keep people tied into the platform and keep them discovering new personalities to listen to. So uh, if you are you know, completely a personality-driven channel, there's going to be some degree of lifespan to it. It's not just YouTube, it's even in the broader uh, entertainment industry. You see this all the time, shows get canceled. Uh, you know, People loved Arsenio Hall for a while back in the 90s and his show kind of fizzled out as his viewers went elsewhere. So this is the kind of stuff that you gotta keep in mind as you're producing your content and finding some ways to diversify what you do, commoditize what you do so that you can continually hit new people and make your life a little bit easier is something that I found to work pretty well for me. And like I said, I do at least take a day on the weekend now, which I wasn't doing when I first started up because having a little downtime helps. And now that I have a huge uh, backlog of, of videos that are being discovered all the time, I'm able to take a little bit more time for myself, which has helped, I think, uh, improve the channel overall. So I wanted to talk on a related topic about the state of the wrap-up because this is a show that is not so evergreen. Uh, it typically is very short-lived. It gets about two or three days worth of viewership and then it is done. And I put a lot of time into the wrap-up. I have to put together the slides for this. I usually do that on Sunday afternoon and then I spend a good chunk of the day on Monday uh, shooting and editing. Either I'm editing or uh, Corey edits it for us. And so uh, this is something that requires an investment of my time and is not something that is a uh, long-lived kind of production. And I've been thinking about some ways to try to get more viewership on this, and that is where all of you come in. So I wanted to show you first, though, the uh, analytics that I've got here since 2017. So I looked at uh, January of 2017 to the present to see uh, how the wrap-up did. And you can see these little spikes here are uh, every week that we do the show. And it drops down, it goes back up, it drops down again. So uh, you can kind of see the cadence to how this show works. Again, about two or three days of viewership and then uh, the episodes kind of die out. But I had a couple of hits over the last year, uh, including my uh, discussion of net neutrality, which got a lot of watch time. Uh, the Dyson vacuum cleaner debacle from a few weeks ago also got some watch time. Both of these were timely topics that were out there and being searched. And one of the things that I'm trying to avoid is covering drama and all the BS related to it. Sometimes it's something that I think might be a drama-like topic, but has some relevance to what we talk about here often. So I might cover that. So I'm trying not to get too clickbaity, but you can see how things in the news that are in the front of the public mind uh, do tend to get watched more often. And unlike the rest of my content, which is only about 20% subscriber views, uh, this is the opposite. In fact, about 80 to 90% of the wrap-up is viewed by subscribers. And I want to be able to deliver more content to you that uh, might result in more watch time. So what I'm really eager to hear from all of you is to what kinds of topics do you want me to cover on the show? Uh, what segments do you think are not working? Uh, what I typically do on the show, as you all know, is we open up with a little ad. I thank the supporters on Patreon and on the uh, donor box page, and then we look at the week in review. I do a topic or two that's in the news, and then I take your questions, and then we do all the wrap-up stuff at the end for uh, how you can help the channel and what's coming up later this week and whatnot. And this show has morphed from like a five-minute you know, week in review thing to now a 30-minute diatribe, and it's actually doing pretty well on the podcast side. It's starting to you know, get some viewers on the audio feed that I do. But again, I really just want to hear from you as to uh, what we can do to try to grow the, the viewership here because it really doesn't grow. It stays about the same uh, with some exceptions here that we saw towards the beginning of the year. And I want to try to find some ways to uh, build it out more. So the kinds of topics that uh, you would like to see covered, I would like to hear about. Uh, so let me know down in the comment thread and we can try to figure out uh, how to spruce this little show up a little bit more to uh, get more people watching. I have no intent of stopping the wrap up. This is something that I think is a worthy investment of my time because I'm able to hear from you directly and get some good feedback back and forth. This is really the only video that I do uh, throughout the week that directly speaks to subscribers. So I am not gonna stop it, but I do wanna make it better because one of the things that I very strongly believe in is continuous improvement and using data to inform that because I don't wanna spend my time doing things that people don't care about. So that is why uh, we're taking a look at the wrap up and how we might be able to make it better. So let me know down in the comments below. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including gold level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast. Chris Allegretta and Kalyan Kumar.
If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.